A few days ago, I was on the Pocket Base homepage and noticed this cool effect where the gopher's eyes would follow my mouse wherever it went. It's very subtle, but the kind of thing that makes the web page feel special. It brought back childhood memories of being terrified in a haunted house while the eyes on a painting followed me around. <laughs> I was never quite the same after that. In today's video, I'll show you how to combine JavaScript with some basic trigonometry to reverse engineer this proximity hover effect. Now, whenever reverse engineering a UI element on the web, I usually start in the browser dev tools. If we inspect the gopher, you can see we have three images here. One is the gopher itself, and then two smaller images to fill the eye holes. Look at my eye holes! Oh my god, you have eight eye ho holes. What you'll notice is that each eye has a transform rotate style that changes whenever the mouse moves around the DOM. That's pretty straightforward, but the tricky question here is how does it calculate the rotation based on the mouse position? Well, if you hadn't failed trigonometry, you would know that you could use the ATAN2 function, which has been around since Fortran, to get the angle on a Euclidean plane given in radians of a ray that goes from the origin to point x, y. If you can't do trigonometry in your head, you really have no business programming in HTML. I'll give you a couple of seconds to click off of this video now. Sorry if there's a misunderstanding. Uh, it's not the end of the world, just go away. Okay, so now that we just have real programmers here, let's take a look at some of the JavaScript code on this page. You can actually find every event listener that's registered on the page by going to the event listeners tab in the browser dev tools. The one we're interested in is mouse move. And as you can see here, we have some svelte code that's attached to the mouse move event globally on the window. If we remove it, notice how the eyes stop following. But if we click on the code, we can get an idea of what the developer did here. The code is minified, but luckily svelte just compiles to vanilla JavaScript, so it's pretty easy to understand. Basically, it gets the position of the gopher, the position of the mouse, then calculates the angle between them, then updates the transform rotate property. Now that we have an idea about how it's done, let's open up VS Code and implement it ourselves. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see other UI elements reverse engineered like this, let me know in the comments. First, we have a basic HTML page here, along with an app.js script. I'm going to add a style for the main element as display grid to place the items in the center. One is the base image of Rick and Morty, and the second image is a box to cover their eye holes. We want the eye to be stacked on top of the base image. In the HTML, I'll place the base image first, then add a div with all four eyes inside of it. Now to place the eyes in the eye holes, we'll give the eye container, along with every eye inside of it, absolute positioning. Now at this point, the eyes aren't in the right place, but we can put them there by modifying the top, left, right, and bottom properties, which is most easily accomplished in the browser dev tools. Define the top and right properties, then update the value to move the eye into the eye hole. Once in place, you can grab the value, and I'm just going to simply add it as an inline style. Now that the eyes are in place, let's see if we can use JavaScript to rotate them. The event we want to listen to is mouse move. And the way we do that is by calling document add event listener with the mouse move event, and then provide a function to handle it every time that event fires. It fires whenever the mouse moves, which is a lot, so you want to avoid expensive calculations here. I'm console logging the event, and as you can see here, it provides a lot of information. And what we're interested in is the client x and y values, which represent the position of the cursor. We can go ahead and set up variables for those values, but now we need to calculate the position of the anchor element. For that, we'll need to get rect. And what I mean by that is we need to get the bounding rect client of the element that represents the middle of the circle. Get bounding client rect will give us a box that you can imagine being drawn around the anchor image. To get the middle of that box, we can do some simple math here to divide the left and width properties by two, and the same for the top and height. At this point, we have the coordinates for the middle of the base image and the current position of the mouse. The question becomes, how do we calculate the angle between them? That's where Stack Overflow, I mean trigonometry comes in. We'll create another function that takes these four coordinates as arguments, inside of which we'll subtract the x and y values from each other to normalize the values because ATAN2 expects the ray to start from point 00. zero. ATAN2 will give us the angle between the two points in radians, however, CSS will need it to be in degrees. We can easily convert it by multiplying by 180 and dividing by pi. And now, all we have to do is call this function in the event listener with the values of the mouse and image that we calculated earlier. Go ahead and console log it, then in the demo, you'll notice that if you move your mouse around, it should print out the degrees of a circle, the middle of which could be anywhere in the DOM, but in our case it's the middle of the image. The final step is to rotate the eyes. We can easily do that by looping over each eye hole, then set the style transform rotate property to the angle that we calculated. And now we have this creepy UI where the eyes follow us wherever we go. Pretty cool, but I want to also make this a little more psychedelic. Another thing we can do is use the CSS filter property to apply a hue rotate to the anchor image. Now, notice how the colors of the base image change as we move the mouse around. And lastly, so people don't call me out in the comments, 
comments, I'm going to optimize this code a bit by removing any unnecessary calculations from the event handler. This code works, but we don't really need to grab the DOM elements and recalculate the rect on every event. So let's go ahead and move that code somewhere else. That concludes this tutorial. If you're enjoying this content, make sure you're subscribed and let me know what you want to reverse engineer next. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one.